Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time. And this week's topic, guys, is preparing your trading day for maximum profits. What I'm finding is a lot of you guys are kind of tongue-tied and twisted. You're like pretzel-tied. You don't really know what's expected of you and when it's expected of you throughout the trading day. So today we're gonna talk about that. For example, you wanna get in front of your trading desk at least 30 minutes before the market opens, preferably 45 to 60 minutes before the market opens. You wanna open up your trading platform and right after that, you wanna have a quick review, a cheat sheet, if you will, of your trading plan. Why? Because that's your guide. That's your roadmap to success. So review your trading plan briefly. Then you're going to take a look at the market, right? And you're going to say, is the market gapping up today? Is it gapping down today? Is it flat today? What's my bias? Do I think it's higher? Do I think it's lower, et cetera? Why? Because this is going to have an impact on the types of stocks that you trade, relative strength stocks, relative weakness stocks, et cetera, and so forth. Take a quick look at the economic calendar. Take a look for possible FOMC. Take a look for petroleum or natural gas reports. Then you're gonna pull out your dollar gainers, dollar losers list, and you're going to scan down that list to find 10 or 15 or 20 of the best ideas out there. Once you've done all that, you're right around 920, 925, give or take the market's going to be opening soon. And then what you want to do is you want to build what I call a favorites list. Okay, so you have your gap list from the dollar gainers and losers, and you're going to dwindle it down to your favorites list. So out of those 15 gaps, you might pick three or four of your absolute top ideas, draw a trend line on them, draw your support and resistance line, put price points where you would like to enter the stock, if it has a good pattern, okay? So then the market opens, you do your trading, you use your pre-market charts to kind of help you out with all that stuff. And once you're finished your trading, you have to do what? Your follow-up, your record keeping. How many of you guys actually do that? Be honest. How many of you have a trade tracking spreadsheet that you fill out? How many of you actually trading journal your stocks and trades that you took that day? Take a picture, put it on PowerPoint, whatever it is, mark up those charts. Probably not many of you. This is what I'm getting at. Most of you out there are hacking around. You're not taking this business seriously enough. Well, think about it for a second. Don't sports teams track all their data? They have, I mean, look at baseball with sabermetrics. It's an entire business within a business just tracking statistics, okay? Companies do it for marketing. Obviously, Pepsi thought it was smart to pay Beyonce millions of dollars. Why? Because of the return on their investment by spending that money. Why? How'd they know this? Analytics, record keeping, tracking your trades. You need to be doing the same thing, figuring out what is working for you, what isn't working for you. Maybe you're better on long trades than short trades. Maybe you're better on Fridays than you are on Tuesdays. Maybe you're better with zero to $20 stocks than you are with $200 stocks. You won't know any of these things unless you track them. So today's lecture, guys, is talking about all of those things. It's about 45 minutes long, okay? And it's going to talk about everything you need to do throughout your trading day to maximize your potential, maximize your strengths, minimize your weakness, and ultimately maximize your profits as well. All right, so Jared Wesley of Live Traders, let's get to it. All right, this week's topic is preparing your trading day for maximum profit. Uh, I get a lot of emails about a lot of different topics, but one of the things I get frequently is how do you set up pre-market? How do you go through basically the first hour or two of your trading day? So I've done a lecture on pre-market charts and even a little bit of pre-market scanning. Today, I'm going to kind of tie it all together. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, pre-market charts, a little bit about pre-market scanning, uh, a little bit about when you should be getting in front of your desk um, and all the things that go into preparing your trading day, but then also transition a little bit into the actual trading day and then what you also need to be doing when your trading day is done. So basically kind of start to finish um, how your trading day should look uh, if you want to be profitable because I've noticed some people are cutting a lot of corners uh, in their trading uh, they're missing important things like a pre-trade checklist or they're waking up a little bit too late. And I know this might sound crazy, but I'm even finding some people are waking up too early, right? There's actually such a thing as too early if, with regard to scanning. If you're scanning, you know, the market opens at 9.30 and you're scanning at like 7 a.m., 6.30, 
not a lot of the gappers are on the list yet. Some of them are, but you're going to miss a few. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so you definitely want to recheck that list later. But that's today's topic, preparing your trading day for maximum profit. But before we get to that, we have to do when will the insanity stop? The answer is never. All right. As long as there are human beings in this world and those human beings decide to want to become traders, this will never stop. So I expect this to happen forever, as long as I'm doing these lectures. Um, here is one. I only have one today. Uh, and I'll be honest with you. I'm regurgitating this one. I, I can't I can't sit here and lie to you. This is a redo. Why? I had three <laughs> I had three people send me when will the insanity stop um, emails last week. I put them in a folder and I deleted the folder by accident. So I had three really good ones. One was ridiculous, like one that would like make you, you shiver a little bit. Uh, and I deleted them. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, so I'm, I'm doing a little regurge because I feel it's important to keep the insanity uh, going here. So anyway, I have an urgent question. I just started trying out day trading three weeks ago. As usual, I had really good gains on some days and made some bad decisions and ended up with big losses. Um Point here, guys, is you're talking about the DAX, the FTSE. Why is that important? Because it doesn't matter what market you're trading. It could be the U.S. markets. It could be foreign markets. It doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. These things, emotion, psychology, poor money management, afflicts all people from all countries, all walks of life, all traders. Okay, so this is a new trader that in three weeks has very little experience. Three weeks. It's down $9,000. Yeah, they had a $50,000 account. That's almost a 20% loss, 18% loss on your account in three weeks. That, ladies and gentlemen, that is dumb. Straight up idiocy. Okay, I'm not trying to be rude. It just is dumb. You have three weeks experience? My goodness gracious, what can you do profitably in this world in three weeks? Right? Not very much. Even illegal things you probably aren't very good at in three weeks. Okay, so point Take your stop losses, all right? Please, please, please take your stop losses. Use proper money management. I said it this morning uh, to you guys. If you're new to the room or if you're new to trading, $5 risk, $10 risk. No, you're not going to make much money, but you're also not going to lose much money either. And there's a much higher likelihood of being a losing trader in your first 3, 6, 9, 12 months than there is of being a winning trader. I know, I know, I know. You're different. You're special. We know, okay? You're not. You're not, okay? You're not. I know everybody thinks that way, that they're the exception. You're not, okay? You're likely going to lose money in your first few months of trading. So what's the goal? To lose less money. You're, I'll repeat it. You're probably going to lose money in your first few months of trading. So use lower risk and you'll lose less money. Magic, common sense. It's amazing where common sense can get you in this world, okay? All right, so that's this edition, this week's edition of When Will the Insanity Stop? $9,000 in three weeks on a 50K account. Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's dig in. So here's your thing, guys. <clears throat> Don't worry. There's tons of charts in today's lecture. Don't worry. Not a whole lot of text slides, mostly charts. Um, you have to have a trading plan before you start. Period. End of discussion. Okay. You can get trading plan essentials, which is like a 60 or 70 page book we have at Live Traders that will help you build a trading plan. Um, it's literally a step by step process on how to build one. But if you don't have a plan, you're a gambler. And if you're a gambler, you're not a trader. Okay. I know that you think you might be a trader because you opened up a trading account, but you're not. You're a gambler. Okay. And admit it to yourself. You don't have to admit it to me. Are you a gambler? Probably because what I find most traders do, they're one of two things. They either don't even have a plan to start. Okay. We don't even have a plan to start. Okay. Or they have a plan and they don't follow it, which is just the same as not having a plan. So make sure you put together a trading plan and don't come here and say, well, I don't know where to have, I don't know where to build a trading plan. Well, that's fine. That's okay. You shouldn't be trading real money until you have one, right? You got to go to Hamburger University at McDonald's. Um, and then what's the one at Burger King? Whopper Universe, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but anyway, the point is, is all those places, everywhere you go in the world requires you to get some form of training, some form of apprenticeship, some form of education, right? Before they will pay you money to do something. Somehow in trading, people forget that step. So build a defined trading plan. After you have your plan, you have your roadmap for every single day that you trade. Right, You have your roadmap for every day that you trade after that. So now when you wake up, you know what the plan of action is. After that, you're going to wake up and you're going to develop a market bias. 
That's the first thing you're going to do. Once you open up your trading platform, the first thing you're going to do is take a look at the SPY and the Qs, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. You want to look at the IWM? That's fine. Okay. And you're going to look at it. And don't get me. You know, we're going to do this here in a second. Don't worry. Um, and you're going to develop a market bias. You can say, okay, is the market likely to go higher? Is the market likely to go lower? Is it likely to go sideways? Or is it just a crapshoot today? There are days where you're really not sure what the market's going to do. Now, why is this important? It's important because it helps you discern relative strength and relative weakness when you're looking for gaps, right? If the market has a big gap down, maybe into support, for example, and you see a gap up over a red bar, think, wow, that has tremendous relative strength in a market that will likely bounce because the market gap to support, right? So you're just trying to tie in your gap scanning with your market bias. Check any relevant news reports. I, I this is a, I'll be honest with you, this is a step that I probably should do more often. The reason I'm commenting is perhaps it's Wednesday, like today, right? And there might be an oil report, right? A natural gas report, something. And you might have ExxonMobil on your gap list. And it might be 10.30 and you're not even realizing, oh my gosh, 10.30, 11 o'clock, the oil report comes out. Now your hand's caught in a cookie jar and some random event happens that you weren't expecting, kind of like, don't be in an earnings gap if you're swing trading. So check relevant news reports. It doesn't take that long. FOMC days. Yes, exactly. All right. You don't want to be trading at two o'clock when FOMC happens. Why? It's a crapshoot for about five or 10 minutes. Okay. I know many of you are like, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to roll the dice. We're not here to roll the dice. Okay. Create a focus list of favorite ideas. This is basically what? Create a gap list. And you're going to scan for that gap list. And don't worry, guys. Every one of these bullet points is going to be discussed in just a minute. All right? So create a gap list, a focus list, stocks that look really good to you based off of your trading plan rules. Okay? That's what you're scanning for, also based upon your market bias for the day. Then you prioritize that list. Once you create the main list, it might be 10, 15, 20 ideas. Once you've created that list, you prioritize this list in terms of your top, top favorites, like we did today. Right, so I had a list of, I think, 14 ideas, but we had five favorite ideas on that list today, okay? Put those favorites on a thumbnail watch list with potential entry points, kind of know where you would like to enter those trades, a rough idea of the area, okay? And then when the market opens, be patient. Wait for your pitch. Don't be in a rush. So let's take a look. Developing a market bias, all right? So here's an example, all right? Spy on the left, cues on the right. Notice we are in a downtrend, right? Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, okay? So we're in a downtrend on the daily, on the SPY and the Qs in this picture, okay? In this picture, all right? And what happens is the market gaps up on this day, okay? So you're gapping into a wide range red bar. So daily market downtrend, but this is a bullish gap. So you're taking out half or 70% of this red bar. That's There's some shock value there. Does this mean that the market's going to be rip-roaring bullish for the next week or two? No. But we're talking about today. Today, from 9.30 to 12 o'clock, 9.30 to 4 o'clock, whatever time frame you trade today. Okay? So for scalp and micro trading, short-term day trading, all day trading, bullish bias. Long swing trading, long core trading, not a long bias. There's a difference. But for intraday trading, when I see a gap like this on the Qs or a gap like this on the SPY deep into a wide range red bar, I'm looking long for that day. The reason I'm discerning this and separating it for you guys is simple. Some of you will look at it and go, but we're in a downtrend. You told us never go against the trend. The trend is your friend. You're right. But in a micro time frame on a two minute chart, on a five minute chart, even a 15 minute chart, the market is likely to be bullish today, very likely to be bullish. So we have to treat it as bullish. So I, in this scenario, I would be looking for stocks that are even stronger than the market potentially. This doesn't mean we won't short stocks on this day. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means the general idea is the market should go higher, okay? Now, once we have that bias, okay? Once we have that bias, we're going to do what? We're going to go check our economic calendar, okay? Say, hey, oh my gosh, it's Wednesday. There's a petroleum status report at 10.30. There's FOMC minutes at two o'clock. I need to know that. Now, obviously this is older. That's not the point. The point is I need to know what the relevant news reports are. 
because I don't want to be in ExxonMobil or any other petroleum stock at 1029 in the morning, one minute before a report happens. Or if I do trade it, I want to know that I'm going to get out of it or I have some form of protection by the time 1030 comes around. Okay, so if I get in at 945, I have 45 minutes to let that trade wiggle around. But if I'm not at my target yet, I'm going to be going to break even on my stop or doing something to protect myself if I'm in a petroleum or oil-based stock and there's a petroleum status report coming out, okay? FOMC, I would get out of all my positions. I would be flat for FOMC, flat, okay? It's better to be safe than sorry. This is a mantra that I want you to repeat to yourself every day. It's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, sure, once in a while, the market will gap in your direction or that oil stock will go in your direction. Sure it is. But what if it doesn't and you take nasty slippage? It's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Okay, so after you've done your market bias, then you're going to check the weekly economic re you know, reports page. Okay, for the day you're trading, then you're going to do this. You're going to pull up your dollar gainers. You're going to pull up your dollar losers, whatever it is that you use to scan for. I use TradeStation. I put it at the top so people will stop asking me what platform I use. I use TradeStation. Okay, I use dollar gainers and dollar losers. Okay, and what you're looking for is uniqueness, relative strength, relative weakness, level one, level two, level three gaps. And before you ask me what a level one, level two, level three gap is, it's in professional trading strategies. Okay, it's in the course, professional trading strategies. We define it very, very specifically based off many factors, where it's gapping from, where it's gapping to, the shock value it has, the volume it has, how much it's actually gapping, 5% versus 50%. Okay, there's so many, many, many things that we look at. Um, but one of the things that I want you guys to get in the habit of doing is looking at the volume. Okay, note in this particular day, you can see this a little bit older because Tesla is now at like, I don't know, $2 million. Um, you can see on this particular day, Tesla did 400,000 shares in the pre-market, pre-market. BYND, 350,000 pre-market shares. What you're going to notice is, generally speaking, there will always be an exception. Generally speaking, the more volume a stock does in the pre-market, the more institutional commitment that that stock has. And that means the institutions are interested in it and it's much more likely to exceed its average trading range for that day. So let's say you have a stock that normally does a dollar a day in range. Okay, that's the average range for that day. If you have 10 times normal pre-market volume, it will probably double or triple that average trading range. That's important to us. We want stocks that are special. Stocks that are unusual, stocks that are going to do things out of the ordinary that particular day. Okay, so dollar gainers, dollar losers. Again, you don't have to use TradeStation. You can go and use Finviz. Go use Finviz if you want. Okay, scan pre market. I don't think they have pre market on the free version, but the paid version they have um, pre market. Go use Trade Ideas. Go use TC2000. If you use Thinkorswim, there's plenty of scans on Thinkorswim. If you use Fidelity, Ivy, there's plenty of scans out there. Don't sit here and say, Jared, I have to have TradeStation to scan for gaps. You don't. You do not have to have TradeStation to scan for gaps. There's a gazillion different gap scanners. I've already done a YouTube video on that as well. All right? Different gap scanners out there. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to scan that list. Okay? You're going to use... In the pre-market, you're going to scan on the 60 and the daily. You're going to look at the 60-minute chart and the daily chart. 60-minute chart and the daily chart for your gap list. Okay, And you're going to have a little tab on the right-hand side. And it should be long gaps and short gaps. Long gaps and short gaps. That's it. And you're going to fill this, this area out right here on the long side once you've scanned the dollar gainers. Once you're finished scanning the dollar gainers, you're going to go to the dollar losers. Okay, And you're going to scan there. All right, and you're going to fill out this list. And this is going to be your, quote, generalized gap list. Right? This is your general gap list. Why do I say general? Because you're going to go back and fine-tune this list later and probably add one or two and take a few off. You're going to fine-tune it. okay? And then you're going to build a favorites list from it. okay? So the first go-around is just your basic gap list. And you'll miss one or two things. Also, when you scan at 8.30 or 8.45... 
Some things pop up later. They pop up at 9 o'clock or 9.15. So you should, five or six minutes before the market opens, go through that list real quickly once again, the gainers and losers list. Go through it again very quickly just to make sure there's something on there you that you didn't miss, okay? So it's going to look a little bit like this. Right? You say oh, some stocks like MU, BA seems to always do a lot of pre market volume. That's normal. But when you see stocks that don't, like for example, Tiffany's, 1.9 million pre market shares, that's insane. Okay, that's insane. Spotify, 67,000 at the time, that was a lot of volume. Okay, Roku doing 55,000. So I'm not saying just look at volume, that's not what I'm saying you still have to look at the chart. You still have to look at the 60 minute chart. You still have to look at the daily chart, right? But volume gives you a big indication of what the hot stocks are for that day. Likely what the movers and shakers are gonna be. Sure, 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 there's gonna be one or two stocks out there that didn't do much volume and they end up moving huge. That's gonna happen. But we talked about it, it shows a level of institutional commitment, which usually means above average trading ranges. But we still have to to have a good gap. We still have to have a good gap. So the next question would simply be, well, what does, what does a good gap look like? Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Somebody's asking a question. I think it's a good one. You have a minimum float and a minimum stock price. For me, I won't look at a stock that's doing less than 5,000 shares in the pre-market. If a stock is doing less than 5,000 shares, I won't even look at it. I'll, I'll just flat skip it. Now note, look how many stocks I would skip. I would skip this one, 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 this one. In fact, let's just take more look at which ones I would actually look at. So on this list, there's 39 stocks on this list. I would look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And here's the rub. I won't even look at all 10. Soxels and ETF, I generally don't trade ETFs. I would take a look at nine of these 39 stocks. So just around 20%, just over 20% of this list, I would actually click on and look at. And when I click on it, it's going to populate my chart, right? We go back to this. When I click on it, it's going to populate my chart and I'm gonna look at the chart. And then if it's good enough, the volume matches, the gap matches, it's going to get put on this long list right here. Okay, all right, so now, the question then becomes, well, what, what does a decent gap look like? You want to be looking for something like this, okay? Something that has really good shock value. Here's a stock that's clearly in an uptrend, right? Stock moves higher, puts in a little bit of a, a bullish triangle or ascending triangle over here. It rips higher again, consolidates out in a relatively bullish manner, sloppy, but bullish, and, you're, and it's holding the trend line right? It's literally higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and this thing looks higher. So your general opinion of this stock would be bullish, bullish, bullish. And then you wake up and you go, whoa, what just happened? So up until today, you're thinking bullish, 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 bullish. And you should be thinking bullish, 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 bullish. And then all of a sudden the stock gaps down, right? This red bar gaps down, under a wide range green bar, under multiple pivots with room to drop below down into the 950 or $9 area. This is what we call a shock value gap. This is a professional gap. So this stock was clearly in an uptrend. It was clearly bullish. And today you wake up and boom, it gaps down. There's a lot of shock value here. Okay, a lot of shock value. If you owned a stock at $11.50 or $11.75 and you woke up the next day and it was at $10.50, you wouldn't feel very good. It's gapping down 10% against you. So there's a lot of people that want to get out of that position. Why? Because fear is stronger than greed and a lot of people are fearful, okay, and they want to dump it. So they dump the stock and it goes lower, all right? They sell it off, gives you an opportunity to short the stock. For those of you that aren't familiar or aren't aware, because I get this question frequently, Yes, 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 yes. You can make money when the stock goes lower. It's called shorting. Watch the big short. Google the term shorting stocks. You can make money when a stock goes lower. Okay. All right. So this would be a great example. Look at the huge increased volume. Look at the increased range. So big gap down will likely set the high for a long time to come. And we're looking for an entry somewhere under 1050. But that's only step one. That's only step one. You have the gap. 
Doesn't mean you're going to blindly short it. You have the gap. Great. Then what? Well, we have to fine tune this, refine this using pre-market charts and using our trading plan, which will have patterns in it. Three bar plays, breakdowns, sell setups, climactics, etc. Okay, so getting a good gap is only step one. All right, well, let's take a look. Here's an example. All right, so this was from yesterday. Okay, this was from yesterday. So here's PII from yesterday. All right, now granted, I took a screenshot of this later in the day. So that's why the volume is so crazy, okay, on all the stocks. I took a screenshot of this dollar gainers later in the day. All right, so anyway, PII was on the dollar gainers list yesterday. So I clicked on it and I said, oh, wow, it's gapping up over a prior pivot. Is this a perfect gap? No, why? Because it's gapping from a green bar, not a red bar. It's not terrible. Doesn't mean we can't trade it, but I'm going to lower my expectation a little bit because the stock doesn't have any shock value. It's gapping from an already bullish move yesterday. Okay, so it's gapping from a bullish move, but here's the positive. You're taking out one pivot right here. You're taking out another pivot over here. This is really good. So it's not a perfect gap. There are other gaps that are better, like the gap you just saw, but guess what? you're not going to get a perfect gap every single day. It's just not going to happen that way. So we have what we call level two and level three gaps. So not every gap every day, you're going to get a level one gap. Sometimes you have to wait for a level two or level three. So that's where this comes into play. It's still a good gap, but you're just going to have to wait a little longer for a little extra confirmation. Okay. So over this pivot, over this pivot, I like it. I like it over that area. So it's going to go on the gap list. So I would go down this list. I go click, 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 click. Oh, PII looks kind of nice. Put it on the gap list. All right. Next. Oh, let's move to the short gap list from yesterday, right? From yesterday. And again, I apologize. I took the screenshot later in the day. I took the screenshot later in the day, but I'm going down the list. I'm going down the list. And I look at MMM. I'm like, oh, this is a pretty damn nice gap. Why? It's gapping under a pretty decent sized green bar. And that green bar closed at the high of the day. And now it's gapping under one green bar, two, three green bars, and a pivot. And the pivot gives us room down to roughly 150. So these two red lines here gives us room from about 156 down to 150. So I have $6 worth of room to trade this stock because the target has to be 150 because there's triple bottom support. Stock came to 150, bounced. Came to 150 again, bounce. Retested for a third time, bounce. So it's probably going to bounce at 150. So from 155 to 150, that's the range I can trade this stock. But I like it because it's gapping under a good size green bar and under a pivot. So MMM would make the gap list. We're going to put it on the list. Okay, put it on the list. Now, once we have the list... I'm going to go in, I'm, I'm not going to show it here, but I'm going to go into the pre-market chart and I'm going to look at what pre-market charts look the best, which ones have the nicest, cleanest pre-market patterns. And then I'm going to take those stocks and I'm going to put them on my thumbnail watch list. My favorite, favorite stocks are going to make my thumbnail watch list. Now, I frequently get asked, well, how many stocks do you watch, Jared? It depends on how many stocks I find. Right. For me, the maximum long stocks I'll watch is 12. The maximum short stocks I'll watch is 10. Why? Well, I have two little slots down here on the bottom right for the market. I want to see what the market's doing as well. So I won't watch more than 12 longs or 10 shorts. Why? Because I feel like that's as many as I can reasonably watch. 22 stocks is a lot of stocks to watch. Now, do I watch 22 stocks every day? Heck no. Maybe one day a month do I actually have a gap list that has 20 stocks on it. Less than that. It's less than that. OK, so my point I'm making is you only want to watch as many stocks as you can reasonably watch without getting distracted, without missing trades. That's key. Watch as many as you can without missing the trade. OK, so if you can only watch four stocks, only watch four stocks. If you can only watch 10 stocks, only watch 10 stocks. I put these on two minute time frames. The reason I put them on two minute time frames is I love to trade from 930 to 1015. It's my bread and butter time of the day to trade. The best time frame, I, in my opinion, you can use for 930 to 10 o'clock, 930 is two minutes. 
One minute's a little bit fast. Five minutes, a little bit slow. Two minutes, perfect. Now, this does not mean I don't take one minute trades. It doesn't mean I don't take five minute trades. It just means for my thumbnails, the two minute is the one I watch the most and I keep it static. All right, after 10 a.m., I might change this to five minute charts. All I have to do is click one and all of them will populate on a five minute time frame. But I like the two minute because I think it's most productive and conducive from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Now, what you'll see here, guys, is here's the gap list, long watches, short watches. And then note, under the gap list, this is posted on stock twits, okay? Under the gap list, you'll see my favorites. Favorites, Tech D over 91, Keys over 56, Dollar Tree under 88, DG under 90. So I take the best of the best, the top 1% of all naval aviators, all right? Name that movie. Anyway, gap list starts out with 10 or 20 ideas drill down to a favorites list of maybe three to five ideas. Okay, that's how it works. You want to literally be trading the best of the best. Okay, we'll make you better. All right, so once we do that, once we've checked our news reports, we are basically what? We're ready for the open. So we reviewed our trading plan. We got in front of our desk around 8.30 to 8.45, New York time, okay, for a 9.30 open. So we got in front of our desk between 45 and 60 minutes early. If you're a really good trader, you can get in front of your desk 15 minutes early, 30 minutes early, 15 minutes early. But for newer traders, give yourself a little more time. So we got in front of our desk. The first thing we did, check our trading plan. Just review the plan so you know what the plan is. Second thing, check the market bias. What is the market doing today? Gapping up, gapping down, sideways, whatever. Then check news reports. What relevant reports are happening today, particularly from 9.30 to 10.30, if that's when you trade, I like to trade the open. Scan dollar gainers and dollar losers. You can use this on TC2000, TradeStation, FinViz, Trade Ideas, whatever you want, okay? Whatever you want. Build your basic gap list of 10 to 15 ideas, generally speaking. Some days it's only five ideas. Some days it's 25 ideas, okay? Then dwindle that down and drill it down to your top three to five favorites with price points. And the price point simply means this is an area I would like to trade this stock, okay? That's an area I would like to trade this stock. So regardless, and this is important, regardless, okay, of how nice a gap is or how much we, quote, like something, we never, ever randomly buy it. And this is what pisses me off about a lot of people on social media or stock twits. They're like, ha ha, Jared, you were totally wrong on that idea today. What do you mean I was wrong on it? I posted an area in which I would like to trade the stock if it gave me a pattern. I'm like, oh, well, you said over 56 and that stock tanked all day long. Well, it didn't give us an entry. So no harm, no foul. This is why you never blindly follow anybody, anybody, okay? Regardless of how good a gap is or how much we like it, we never randomly buy it. We have to have a pattern. And that pattern has to be predefined in your trading plan and preferably a picture of it on your wall. I'm not kidding. A picture of it on your wall. Most people do better with visual aids than they do with mental aids. Okay, if you're a very good person visualizing things in your head, awesome. But most people do better with a picture in front of them. Pilots and checklists. Take that picture, have a checklist below the picture and say, I need this, 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 and this. Does it have a bottoming tail? Does it have volume? Is it at support? Is it near a moving average? Is it a 50% retracement? Check, 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 check. If it checks all the boxes and looks like the picture on your wall, take the trade. If it doesn't, don't take the trade. How many of you skipped that step? You don't have to answer me because I know it's most of you. Most of you don't. But, 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 Jared, I'm going to miss the trade if I do that. Well, if a pilot didn't check out the aircraft and go through his checklist, you might die. So do you want your pilot to go through his checklist before he takes off? Uh, yeah, Jared. Well, what if he said, but we might leave five minutes late and you might arrive a little bit late, but I'll get you there safe if I go through the checklist. Do you think you'd wait the five minutes to have the pilot go through the checklist? I'm guessing you would. I'm guessing you would. Why? Because the consequence is grave, serious consequences. You're looking at trading as the consequence isn't that great. It is. It is. You're either going to blow up your trading account because maybe you didn't do your money management checklist. Maybe you didn't do your stop loss checklist. Or worse yet, you're going to have to go back and work for that crappy boss that you hated to begin with. 
because you didn't go through your checklist. So what if you miss a trade or two? It's going to happen. I, I missed one today. It's going to happen. Oh, well, I'd rather be safe than sorry. That's the theme I want you to take from this. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Missed money is better than lost money. There will always be another trade. Always. Okay? This is the problem with this industry. Everyone's teaching you a bunch of crap. Crap, crap, crap. Let's go take a penny stock that was at KODK today. It went from like $5 to $50. I'm going to get rich quick. No, you're not. You're going to give it all back at some point when one of those gaps against you. All right? Be smart, man. I know common sense is, is very uncommon. So here would be an example, guys. Okay, here would be an example of a pre-market chart that I would be interested in. All right, so FedEx gaps up, okay? You see the previous day's close is right around 161.50, right here, okay? Right where my cursor is, right there. That's where it closed the previous day, okay? Now it gaps up this morning to roughly 165. But notice the pre-market. Right here, where my cursor is, right there. This is pre-market. Okay, that's pre-market. Wow, look at that beautiful pre-market consolidation. It's beautiful. Now, what I don't have on here is the 60-minute chart to overlay. And I apologize for that, but I don't have it. So this is a decent gap up. How do I know? It's on my favorites list. It wouldn't make the favorites list if it wasn't a good gap. Okay, but again, I apologize for not having the 60 or the daily on here. So I'm saying, hey, guys, I really like MCRN. And I like FedEx. And I like FedEx over 165. Now, why? Where would I get that number from? The pre-market chart right here. Right there. I'm going, hmm, I don't really want to buy it in the pre-market. So let's wait till the market opens. And if it gives us a pattern, we'll take it. Well, now we used the market open as well as the pre-market to give us a breakout pattern. So 165 is the entry, 164.30 is the stop. Oh, look at that, 9.31 in the morning. FedEx, 165 by 164.30. That thing rips. We went to 168 within 30 minutes. So this is how you take your trading plan all the way through to the end to where you see the execution of the trade. So all that work you did in the pre-market allows you to take this trade. And here's the beauty. It doesn't mean that you can't be aggressive with certain trades. If you have a level one gap and you have a really good pre-market chart, you're allowed to get in at 931 or 932. Now, granted, this didn't actually trigger until a little bit later, right? This was called at 931. And if you take a look at the bars, it didn't actually trigger to like 955, right? Take a look at it. See the volume at the bottom? 10 o'clock is right where this bottoming tail is. It really triggered around 10 o'clock, Okay. So I liked it at 925. I called it at 931, and it took almost 30 minutes before it actually triggered. But it was a painless winner, okay? And this is what it looked like, all right? There it is, okay? Five-minute chart, 15-minute, one-minute, two-minute. And here's the thing. What if, what if, what if you didn't look at the pre-market? You would think I just took a, a two-minute high or something of that nature, okay? You just think, oh, he just took a random pattern or a random trade with no pattern. No, that's not true. I, I took a real pattern, okay? I took a real pattern. And there's the result. We did well in this. You know, we made, I don't know, 700 bucks on it, okay? Again, same situation. This is how I want you guys to do this. I want you to start with the daily and go, wow, look at that gap up. It's gapping over two red bars and a pivot. It's got room back to about, I don't know, 1870. Yeah, there's a little bit of junk on the way up, a little bit. I'll give you that. But generally speaking, the double top is what we're most concerned about. But I do like the gap over the two red bars, over the pivot, and on volume. So what's my job? Find an entry. Find an entry. So I've done my job before the market opened. I've located and found the best gap available. Now my job is to be patient and wait for my pitch. Okay, so I've done all my pregame prep, right? You've trained, you've worked hard, it's training camp, it's game time now. I've got my gap list. So after the gap list, I'm just waiting, waiting. So I notice it gaps up and then kind of goes red the first two minutes, then goes green the second two minutes, then bottoming. So, so far in the first five, six minutes of the day, nothing really happened. And then it starts to set up a pattern. 
And that pattern ends up being a five minute three bar play or a mini one or two minute breakout. We get in at $17. The stop is $16.75. Rip. Guys, it went to $18.80. It's $1.80 on a 25 cent stop. Dollar, it's like seven to one on your money. There it is, seven to one on your money. How did this happen? It started with the gap. It actually started with your trading plan, knowing what to scan for. Okay. And then you get the gap, and then you wait, and you wait, and you wait. And where are we waiting? What are we doing? We're doing this. Guys, I'm not kidding with you. We're just sitting here and staring at your thumbnail charts. Just staring there. Just dum de dum de dum de doo da de da de doo. Boring, 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 boring. Oh, oh, whoa, what is that? Oh, yeah, look at that pattern. Let's get in that. That looks awesome. And that's this. That's how good trading works. It's not all up in your face, crazy action all the time. Good trading is relatively boring. It's like watching Unmall drive a Ferrari. Really freaking boring doing 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. Okay? But he gets to the same place that I get to. Okay? I just get there a little quicker. Anyway, all right? My point is, is it is boring, but it's productive and it makes money. That's good trading. That's what good trading looks like. Okay? See it again. Let's see it one more time. This time I don't have the gap. But you have the market, you have the spy, multiple concepts converging, pulling back to support, bottoming tail, rising moving average, 50% retracement. Here's your entry, here's your stop rip. I again, I apologize. Well, actually, no, I do. I have the daily stock in there. I apologize. There is the daily stock gapping over a pivot at 55 bucks. Okay. Pulling back and then today gapping up. And there's the market gapping up. Okay. So multiple time frames converging, multiple concepts converging. All right. Here's another example, okay? On Facebook, I try to get a bigger picture of this, but my historical data wasn't working properly yesterday. But again, look at the, I apologize. It's very small, I apologize. I know it's hard to see. I get it, I get it, I get it, okay? But look at this breakout here in the pre-market, pre-market, okay? So you have a one minute breakout after the market opens, but take a look at the 15 minute. What's happening here? Take a look at the 15 minute. We're breaking over this area at like 199 to 200 bucks, give or take. Okay, pivot, 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 pivot. Higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. You could argue it's a bull triangle. A very subtle one, but it's a bull triangle, an ascending triangle. So I'm looking at it going, wow, I like Facebook over 200. That's in the pre-market, right? Pre-market, I'm commenting. Wow, Facebook over 200 looks really good. So 199.75 by 199.15, boom, we'll make 800 bucks on it. Right off the open, not right off it, it triggered about six minutes into the day. How does this work? How does this happen? We start with our trading plan, our market bias, news reports, scanning, thumbnail watch list, and then we stare at the thumbnails till we get a pattern. Pretty simple, okay? This can work on higher time frames too. So here's an example, guys, of a stock that didn't gap up. So not every one of your stocks has to come from a gap. Maybe it's a carryover list. Maybe you have a daily watch list that you really, really like, right? You should have a universe of stocks anyway. So this stock did not gap up. It opened relatively flat. But you might have this on a carryover list. You might have this on a daily watch list. And you're thinking, wow, if we can get over 92.50, this thing's going to be awesome. Why? Because that's where it's been stopping, right? Pivot, 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 pivot. 92.50, all give or take the same area. So the next time it gets over 92.50, I'm interested. So it finally gets over 92.50. Now, could you have bought this at 92.50 for a swing trade? Answer, yes. If you wanted to just buy this as a swing trade at 92.50 with a stop at 91, you're good. There's nothing wrong with this as long as you're treating it as a swing trade. Don't buy it at 92.50 and call it a day trade because it's not a day trade at 92.50 unless there's a pattern at 92.50 on a lower time frame. In this case, there wasn't. All right, so 92.50, you could have bought it as a swing trade with a stop at 91. I didn't do that. We looked at it over here at 93.50. Okay, yes, it was up about a dollar, but we had a 15 minute three bar play with a 20 cent stop loss. 93.40. 
by 93.20 and it popped to 94, went three to one in 15 minutes. How is this possible? Because of the 60 minute chart. Was this stock a little bit extended? It was, it was up just over a dollar, but still within its trading range, all right? On an average day, this stock was doing about a dollar 50, right? Take a look at the average move, it was doing about a dollar 50. So it was up about a dollar 10, dollar 20. So yeah, it was a little bit concerning about the range, but two things, one, 20 cent stop loss. When I go to one R, I go to break even. When I get one R, I go to break even. So it wasn't a huge risk because it was still in its average trading range. And two, if we're breaking out of this area on volume, it should exceed its average trading range, but you still have to be careful. You still have to be careful. So if you bought it at 92.50, hold it overnight as a swing trade. If you bought it as a scalp trade, then trade it as a scalp trade. Okay, we can talk about intraday swing trades later, but you know that's a different topic where you take an intraday trade and hold it as a swing trade. Okay, now, so we've taken you from the pre-market all the way to the market open and into the trading day. Now what happens? Well, now it's 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever time you stop trading. What are you doing with all this stuff? How are you gonna get better? right? You don't start as a great trader. Nobody does. So how are we going to improve? How are we going to do this? We're going to do a post-market review of all of our trades every single day. Oh my gosh, Jared, but that's a like, that's like kind of like a lot of work. It's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like a hard business too, right? So if you don't want to do the work, just don't start. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. If you don't want to do the work, just just don't start. This isn't your business. And that's there's no shame in that. This, hey, people like different things. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why they make vanilla and strawberry ice cream and a lot of other flavors. No shame in not liking this business. But if you're not going to put the work in, just don't start. So once you're done trading, trading's the fun stuff. Just like playing in the game. The game's the fun stuff. It's the pregame and the postgame that matter more. It's the pregame and the postgame that prepare you for the game. If you're not going to do the work, just just don't do this business. Okay. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take all your trades, take a screenshot of them. Okay. Print them off, take a screenshot, put them in an online file folder. I usually use a PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint, um, office PowerPoint, whatever it is. Okay. And I just copy and paste them in here and I mark them up exactly the way you're seeing. I mean, then what do you do after you mark them up? Cause that's important. Mark your entry, mark your stop loss, because you're going to go back and you're going to see, Oh my gosh, I don't even see the pattern. But yet, in the middle of the trading day, I thought there was a pattern there. But when you go back later, you're like, I don't see any pattern there. And that happens frequently. Your goal is to get that to happen infrequently. So when you go back and look at the trades you took, you should be like, yeah, okay, I get it. It immediately strikes you and goes, yeah, that was, that was okay, that was cool. You're not gonna get them all right, okay? And then once you do that, you're going to put in the empirical data in a tracking spreadsheet. The empirical data is the date you took it, what the symbol was, the time you got in, the time you got out, long versus short, how many shares you took, the entry price, the stop loss, where you got out of the trade, and a whole slew of other information. Okay, your batting average, your average size of the average size of your winning trade, the average size of your losing trade, um, your win loss ratio or sharp ratio, whatever. It's not a true sharp ratio. It's more like a win loss ratio, your profits, gross profit, net profit. And also you want to know more, more information. You want to know how often do you go long versus short and when you go long versus short, which one's better for you? Are you going long in bad environments? Do you do better on short trades than long trades? What's the time frame you most frequently trade? One minute, two minute, five minute, 15, et cetera, okay? And if so, are you good at those time frames? Maybe you'll come and find out that, you know, I'm really good at the two minute time frame, but I stink at the 15 minute. Well, you have a choice. Get better at the 15, figure out why, or just stop taking 15 minute trades. Vice versa, you might be better at the 15 than the two minute. Are you good at buy setups, three bar plays, breakdowns? Retest trades, what are you good at? Okay, and this this trading report is like two pages long, three pages long. There's way more to this trading report. The point I'm simply making is, this is the only way you're gonna get better is to find out what you're doing well and what you're doing poorly. That's what every business in the world does when they spend money on marketing. They go, okay, well, where's our money best spent? 
How can we attract the most people? Well, Pepsi thinks Beyonce attracts them the most people. So they're willing to pay her millions of dollars to do a Pepsi commercial. Okay. Why? Because they feel like that's a good bang for their buck. Okay. Sports teams, they have analytic teams, baseball, sabermetrics, all this stuff. Why? To get an edge, to be better. What are you doing as a trader to be better? Are you reading a trading book? Do you have a trading buddy? Are you doing continuing education? Are you studying your charts? Do you have a trade tracking spreadsheet? Basically, it comes down to this. Are you doing this? Plan, implement the plan, measure the plan, make an assessment, and improve upon it. And you just go round and round and round and round and round. And this will never stop. This is 24-7 perpetual motion. It never stops. Okay? Resting is rusting, right? Got to act like a sports team. Plan, implement, measure, assess, improve. And just continue that over and over and over and over again. Okay? I bet you. 98% of the people listening to this don't do any of this stuff, or they do very, 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 very little of it, if they do any of it at all, okay? You have a tracking spreadsheet, and it basically says, yeah, yeah, you know, plus $100, minus $50, and that's it. You're not looking at the times of the day you trade, long trades versus short trades, what your average batting average is on your longs versus your shorts, the time of the day you take those longs, the day of the week. Maybe you find that Tuesdays just really stink for you. They're just terrible. Figure out why. Maybe don't trade Tuesday because of it. Maybe just improve on Tuesday. I don't know. But this is what I'm getting at. Fine tune the information. You might find you do really well on stocks between $20 and $100. And for whatever reason, you find you don't do well in stocks under $20 or stocks over $100. Find out why. How is this going to help you? So you can fine tune what you're really good at. Maximize your strengths, minimize your weaknesses, or improve upon your weaknesses. That's what it's all about. I'm going to go back to this, and I haven't preached this in a while. And then we're going to wrap it up. Trading is a business. Treat it like one. Stop being an idiot. Stop hacking around. And just because you can open up an account with 500 bucks or 1,000 or 2,000 bucks doesn't make you a trader. Just because you have tens of millions of dollars and you open a trading account doesn't make you a trader. Okay, it doesn't. It's a real business. It's a viable business. But you have to treat it like one. Most of you are not, okay? And it comes down to that, all right? So I hope you guys learned a little bit about daily routines, what the expectation is, how to improve upon your trading, um, but most importantly, what the routine is in terms of the pre-market through the trading day and what you need to be doing after the trading day as well. No, there's a lot of information in there that got kind of glossed over because, well, it would take me all day to get through every step of that, all right? But I hope... It'll help you at least become a little bit of a better trader. I'm Jared Wesley. We'll get back at it again next week. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.